Star Sand is a harsh desert survival game. If you're a survival game lover like myself, this one may give you a run for your money. Hello everybody, I am Granddaddy Gamer, and today I'm gonna to be going over tips and tricks to help you survive in the first couple days of the game. So if you're ready, let's get started. When we first spawn into the game, you're gonna be inside this clay structure. Before we leave, there's a few things that you need to know before you go exploring. First thing is at the very bottom here, you got your hockey bar and you can hockey up to six different items. This is really important because if we pull up our inventory, we only have an additional six inventory slots, giving us a total of 12 slots to hold everything that we can possibly find. However, you can upgrade this by coming into the crafting menu and it will equip at the bottom and at the very top right, you'll see backpack. And if you craft this, this will add an additional 12 spaces. Under placeables, you can find storage boxes and you can use these to store additional items. Now at the very bottom left here, you're gonna find all your information that you need to know about. The first of all is your temperature gauge. Now right now it says 80 degrees and there's a red arrow pointing up. This is because this is indicating that I'm hot and my temperature is rising. Subsequently, if I was cold, there would be a blue arrow underneath it and my temperature would fall. Next to that is the heart, which makes sense. That is your health. The very top is a brown, Looks like a little bread icon there. That is your nutrition, your food. And at the very bottom with the droplet makes sense with blue, that's your hydration. The hotter you are, the faster your hydration drops. If we pull up our inventory here, you can see those same stats right here on the right. And on the left, all our equipable items. At the very bottom, you can also turn your character if you'd like, just kind of see them. Defense, now we can add armor later on in the game which will increase our defense. There's different ways to increase your sun protection as well as to increase cold protection. Now, as we leave, there's nothing here, like nothing. You're in the middle of the desert. So the way you're gonna to wanna to navigate is to look for landmarks. And we're gonna to head to these landmarks. The sun is really unforgiving and you're gonna to wanna to do everything you can to combat that because the hotter you are, the faster your hydration drops. And eventually you will start to take damage when you have either no food or no water. There's a couple ways to do that early game. One is if you're in an oasis, you can use the water. So I'm just barely in the water here. And as you can see on my temperature gauge, it's still going up because I'm overheating. But the farther I go into the water, Eventually, I will start to cool off, like here. Now you can see there's a blue arrow, and my temperature's dropping quite fast. You can use this early game to combat temperature. Another thing we can do is we can make a straw hat. All you need is some cordage here. Cordage is really easy. All you need is stems. You can get stems from either breaking up palm fronds or breaking up yucca. You can equip that hat and in your character menu, under sun protection, that'll increase and you can equip it right there on your head. The next thing that we can do is we can find desert fruit. You can find these around the oasis. Pick these, if we go it and we click on it, you're gonna get all kinds of stats about this. First, it tells us it can restore 25 to 30 points of hunger and three to eight points of thirst. This seems like a really good idea, and I made the same mistake a lot of new players make is to consume this. This will poison you, and it's actually better utilized as a balm. So if we come into crafting, and we go into resources, you can see the desert balm right here on the second line. You click that, one desert fruit and one palm frond. Now, if you're following the tutorial, it's going to prompt you to make an ax so make your axe. Once you're making your axe, you can see in the cue bar down here and the progress of your crafting. Automatically equips. Now we have our axe. 
Now there's a couple different trees that we can take a look at. One is this coconut palm. We can climb this. And we can pick those coconuts. This will help with hydration and food. The next tree that you want to look out for, guys, is date palms. And just like it says, there's dates in there. You can pick them. Come here. Restores 12 to 15 hunger. Now, if you've played Stranded Deep, it works just like Stranded Deep. You got to take the husk off. You can hover over this. It restores 25 to 30 thirst. This is really good. You can consume that water. And then you get an empty coconut. You, then you can drop this, break it open, and eat the flesh. Okay, so now that we have everything that we need, we have our desert fruit, we have our palm frond, we can craft a desert bomb. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can see down in the queue. And actually, this is really good because you can see I'm overheated. I'm at 116 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a real problem for me. Okay, it's done. We can come over here, we can highlight it, and we can consume this. Now you can see my temperature is going to drop, and the sun icon that was there is now gone. It's a slash through it. I'm good. So those desert fruit, and they will respawn, are really good early game to just combat that. Between the hat and the desert bomb, you should be okay. Now there is a map. So if you hit M, you can pull up your map, and you're going to need to mark this yourself. And as you can see, we have a number of things. It'll start you here. This is where we spawned in this structure right here. And then this was the first oasis we were on. Now, in order to find out where you're on the map, if you pull up your crafting menu here, you come into all placeables, you're going to see the marker. If you make a marker, I actually have one right here. So we can put it down. Now, these will, if you hit a sandstorm, the sandstorm is going to blow all your markers out. You can place this with an arrow pointing in the direction that you want to go or where you want to point to. Say maybe back to a base or where you came from. And then if you pull your map up, you can actually see the arrow in the direction you're putting it in. From that point, you can click an icon, see, and you can put it in. Like so. So even if the sandstorm comes and knocks down your marker, you will have marked the area on your map, and that's how you're going to be able to tell where you've been. Now, hunting is a thing as well. And you come in to your weapons. You can do this with bows and arrows or crude spears. I prefer crude spears. Just go ahead and loot the corpse. You can take the meat and the hide. I usually find more of these deer, antelope, whatever they are, in the evening, at dusk, or at dawn. Usually in the heat of the day, I do not find them even near the oasis. Now, if you're following along with the tutorial, it's going to prompt you to make a campfire. Now, there's a couple reasons this is so important, other than the obvious, where you're going to be able to cook your food. Two, you're going to spawn charcoal from the burnt wood. You can be able to use that charcoal for crafting things like gunpowder and fertilizer for your farm plot. The third is at night, the temperature drops really fast. And in the early game, when you don't have enough like cold protection, you're going to get cold really, really fast. Now, it's really easy to use. You just take your, like here, I have some raw meat. It will restore hunger 15 to 20. I guess you could eat it, but as you see, you see a little green skull now down here at the bottom left that tells me I am poisoned. I have food poisoning, so don't eat it raw. I mean, if you have to, you can, but don't do it. Just drag your food to the food slot here. This is the output, and this is your progress bar. Now, you can add sticks to the wood. I like to use logs if applicable. And that's it, you just drop, you don't have to light it or anything. As you can see here, this bar in the middle between food and cooked is your progress of your cooked meat for each piece. And you have charcoal output right here, which we can just pull and it tells you right here, charred wood used to craft gunpowder, also used as fertilizer. Now farming is definitely a thing if you come under placeables you can see the farm plot right here you just need some wood planks 
and some cordage. Um, the way they farm, it's actually really cool. You come into here, you can see I need water and I need fertilizer. Now you can get fertilizer, it's very easy to get. You can get it using charcoal from your fire. This is just so easy early game. You can go in, you can drop that right under the fertilizer and you get the bar here. Now you can take your water bottle full of water and you can drop that in right there and then you just click the fill and you can see how it fills. You go back to the water. Actually, if you go ahead and grab your water bottle out of your farm plot, go like this and there you go. And then you see the growth. Now you'll find things for seeds, things to grow. What I'm using is mango seeds. There's a number of mango trees. Here's one right here. Just leave them up, they'll regrow. I am actually growing another mango tree right here, but as I eat them, I have a chance to get seeds. If you found this guide useful or helpful in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below if you have your own tips and tricks for new players so that we can all benefit from them. And I'm Granddaddy Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next.